we should have at least a knuckle dragger version understanding of external ballistics at a minimum. We, do not, we don't need to be mathematicians or scientists. Knuckle dragger version. So we have line of sight, line of bore. What does the round start to do as soon as it leaves the muzzle? Drop. I heard one answer. So it's all right, you can answer whatever you want. I don't care, because we'll talk about what it is. So I heard a couple rises and a couple drops. The bullet starts to drop. As soon as it leaves the muzzle, it starts to fall. We're not smart at shooting smart rounds. We are, however, sending it on an upward trajectory. We're sending it on an upward trajectory because we built in an angular relationship between our muzzle and our optic and our sight. And that angular relationship is measured in what? Right on. Minutes of angle. In a circle there are 360 degrees. If we were to pull out one of those degrees, it is broken down into 60 increments. And one of those increments is a minute of angle. And a minute of angle is a minute of angle all the way out to infinity. Roughly, what is minute of angle and unit of measure? One inch. One inch at 100 yards, roughly. Yes, I know it's 1.047.1963. But it's roughly one inch at 100 yards. Next question for you. Your sights, there's two answers here. Because I saw two different sights out there. Each click, when did your elevation? Represents what minute of angle? Right, yep. Yeah. I heard right answers and wrong answers. All right. So, CCO aim point is what? It's half MOA. Half. How about those uh, ACOGs? One third. Right on, one third. Yep. It, it depends on the gen, yes. The new gens are half. But the gens you guys have there are third. I'm pretty sure those are all like Gen 2 uh, ACOGs. There, you know, confusion, a couple guys said quarter. Let's talk about where that confusion comes in. If your sights are half minute, if one minute of angle equals one inch at 100 yards and your sights are half minute angle, at 100 yards, each click, when your elevation is gonna move the strike around how far? Half, half of an inch. A lot of us was zero up closer at 50. Now each click is going to move the strike of the round how far? Quarter. Quarter of an inch. So that's where the confusion comes in. <clears throat> so yeah, they're halves and thirds. So that means that at, we're going to start at 50. So to move the strike of the round a full inch, when did your elevation with the aim points? How many clicks? Ah, come on, you can somebody set it up. Yeah, four. 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 And with the uh, move the strike of the round an inch with the ACOGs. Yes, thank you, six. Right on. All right, let's get back to this guy. <clears throat> now, Personally, with a with a CCO or something like that, I like a 50, 200, zero. That's what we're gonna work on here. Now, the ACOGs require a max ordinate zero, 100. But it's gonna be pretty close. We'll just work them 50 here. So the ACOGs require max ordinates, zero. So the stadia lines work with that. Now with most Holographic type sights, I like a 5200. Right, 5200. <clears throat> I don't kid myself, however. Whenever I have the opportunity, I'm going to go out to 200 and check my dope. Whenever I have the opportunity. One of the reasons I like this is because from zero all the way out to 225, I am either below or above the line of sight about what? About inch, inch and a half, which mitigates my having to concern myself with offset. I put the dot there, let the hammer fall. <clears throat> All right, gravity, number one effect on the external ballistics of the round. What has the second biggest adverse effect? 
somebody said it right yeah wind wind so if we have line of sight <clears throat> wind this way is called full value rule of thumb full value wind 10 knots is going to move the strike of the round about five <coughs> inches at 200 yards you know that 10 knots isn't honking full value half value zero value gravity wind what would you assume as the third biggest adverse effect on the external ballistics of that round humidity temperature. your temperature it's a wind density thing it's math beyond my comprehension <laughs> a good rule of thumb there is for every 20 degrees rise in temperature you're going to gain a minute and that can be pretty substantial it is not uncommon for me to run a course in Madison, Wisconsin one week in 45 degrees and the next week in Phoenix, Arizona at 105. So I see this a lot with my personal guns. I see the change. So whenever you have the opportunity, dial in your dope, get a zero. We need to be able to fire these with impunity. We're not in the business of indiscriminate fire. Everybody good on this? Hey, when it comes to <clears throat> like outfitting these guys, a couple things to consider. One is when you put your optic on, you want to have at least an inch and a half of eye relief from your cheek stock weld. At least an inch and a half of eye relief. Number two, one of the things I like to do is when I put my optic on, see if I can still see my thing. I like to get a silver sharpie and mark the upper and the bottom part of the mount so I know where that guy is. The other thing when I mount that optic, when you mount it and it's loose, there's a little backward and forward motion. You know what I'm talking about when it's loose? We want it forward of that play before we crank it down. So now we have metal on metal contact during recoil then mark it with that sharpie because if you take care of this you'd be able to take this off put it back on and if you put it on the exact same way and retain zero you might lose a quarter a minute but you're gonna you're gonna retain to some degree that zero all right the next thing I want to talk about I want to refresh the fundamentals of marksmanship is applied to this system. Once again, these are dummy rounds. All right, so good old fashioned BRM lingo. Our objective, like I said, when we go down initially, is to group. We're not all gonna be zeroed. No, we're not. But we need to get a group so we can adjust that guy, right, in that target. So the objective is to group. Good old fashioned BRM lingo says that in order to group, we need to build a position to achieve a natural point of aim. How could we define natural point of aim? Keeping in mind that the clarity by which something is defined will determine the effectiveness of its application. I like to say it because it makes me sound smart. <laughs> <coughs> How could we define that? The way your body is aligned at rest. Nice, I like that one. Where your body is aligned at rest. The way your body is aligned at rest. That's a good one. My, mine is uh, comfortably on target with zero muscular input. We're saying the same thing, different wording. But we need to word that in a way so that it, it is palatable to the intended recipient. So I want to try to build a position to achieve a natural point of aim. So I want to get as much of my body and the rifle on the ground as possible. Any issue with me putting that mag on the ground? No. <clears throat> I want to get behind the rifle and I want to pull as deep into the pocket of my shoulder. Initially for me, my technique, I leave this hand off of it initially. Just initially. Because once I build that position to achieve a natural point of aim, I want to breathe in and out. And I want to watch that sight rise and fall straight up and down not in an angle straight up and down i want to be high up on that pistol grip stock extended deep into the pocket 
cheek stock weld heads straight up and down, looking directly through the center of the aperture. <clears throat> Rifle straight up and down as well. Once I'm there, this hand comes up. <sighs> once that sight, once I hit my respiratory pause and the sight is in the center of the black, I start my trigger control. The fundamental is control. So let me ask you, how much finger should I put on that trigger? Alright. Hey, I do a lot of this, by the way. I ask, so just get used to it. Because I'm not just getting, once again, I'm not going to talk at you. <coughs> um, <coughs> a lot of this, a lot of this, especially if you've been around for a while, we're taught at some point this, right? Splitting the distal phalange, because that's so much fun to say. I'm going to call that, because I'm old and crotchety, I'm going to call that an anachronism taught through institutional inbreeding. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call that. And let's be analogous and talk tools. When we have this, we have built in a fulcrum, but we cannot help but to be fast on the bottom part of that fulcrum. So I'm going to suggest build a vise. Build a vise. Get that gap out of there. Because now we have control. The fundamental is control. So deep into the pocket, hand off, breathe in and out, check that respiratory pause, see if the dot falls in, hand comes up just for support. Start my trigger control. Sight, 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 squeeze, 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 sight, 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 squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Boom, the gun fires, it cycles, it chambers another round. Now I need to realign the sights and reset the trigger, follow through. Sight, sight, squeeze, boom, the gun fires, cycles, chambers another round, realign the sights, reset the trigger every time, every time. <laughs>